before you ask, yes, I am watching the All-Star Game. It's going on as I'm recording this audio, and honestly, I kinda like the pace. It's not super lazy like we've come to expect in years past. There's actually some pretty high-flying speed. But today's video goes over one of the biggest pieces that you could say is on the trade market and an idea of what exactly it is he could fetch the Nashville Predators. Spoiler alert, it's kinda huge. So today, we are talking about starting goalie, superstar goalie, elite goalie, UC Soros, because when it comes to the Predators and their situation, you may be saying, wait a minute, this guy is like one of the best goalies in the NHL when he is on his game. He has been a finalist for the Vesna in years past, a very staggering feat considering the fact that he's only 5'10", so he has been one of the most athletic, smart, positionally sound goalies in the NHL, and at only 28 years old, there still is a lot of NHL potential left for Soros to exhibit and grow into. So why would the Predators want to trade him? Well, firstly, he signed on till the end of 24-25, making $5 million a year. That's really cheap. That's a lot of value right there in a goalie who's probably going to get a payday a year and a bit from now. Furthermore, you have yourselves the Nashville Predators team itself not being all too great. So you could debate how appropriate it is to hold on to an asset like this that is going to be so valuable for years wherein the Predators are not going to be all too fantastic. And ponder the question as to whether or not it would serve the Predators better to get value for this guy. Considering that you have Yaroslav Askarov in the system, who is one of the best goaltending prospects we have seen in years, he's been very good in his development so far, so there isn't really any reason to doubt him at this point. So, with another goalie in the pipeline, with a guy who is already supposed to be fantastic, also marinating in his development, is it really worth it to hold on to this many assets? We also had ourselves a few Yaroslav Askarov trade rumors involving him over the course of the past few years. We had seen the conversations at the 2023 draft, whether or not the Montreal Canadiens rejected an Askarov trade, but because the goaltending idea is present with both Saros and Askarov, you could very well debate that it's a possibility that one of these guys, Askarov or Soros, is no longer a predator by the time 24-25 rolls around. But when it comes to what Soros could go for on the market, leave it to David Pagnota, who made an appearance on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio, who went out there and spilled the beans. Take a look at this article published on January 31st from NHLRumors.com. What could the Predators get for Soros? It goes out there and cites an audio hit of Penyota on the fourth period, making an appearance talking with the power play segment with Steve Kolios and Marty Biron, as we had said on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. When asked about what type of package the Predators could get for Soros, he stated they could get up to four assets in return. Here's the transcription of the radio hit. Marty Biron says, Okay, so I'll ask you then, if Soros was ever on the move, it's for a massive package. It would be for picks and players and top-end prospects. What is that? Four pieces? Is it three very A-plus pieces? Like, it's gotta be a huge package. Peñota says this, It would be. Yeah, Marty, without a question. I mean, this is blockbuster territory if it gets to that point. I know a couple years back, the talk was with respect to LA, the talk was, two first-round picks, a top prospect who is a first-round pick, and then a fourth asset. So I would imagine it's in and around the same. That asking price, if it gets to that point, you're looking at, as you said, three A-plus assets plus another piece, that would be part of it. Unless it's, you know, a star for a star, a superstar for superstar type of exchange, and you're dealing with a couple of other pieces here and there to even things out, which is more, that type of move is likely to be seen in the summer. That's just what we've typically seen. So I would love to see the type of move and the type of blockbuster happen in season. That'd be great for us all to talk about, and fans would lose it. That'd be awesome. But certainly, these types of moves are complicated. But Barry Trotz has come out and said they want to keep Soros, but they haven't told teams that no, don't call, we're not going to listen. They are listening. If someone overpays or has a significant package to present, they'll take a look at it. So... This is the idea that I think is worth talking about because when it comes to a lot of Predators fans, there is 
seeming to be an open conversation that Saros, despite the fact that he is this good, despite the fact that he has been a fan favorite over the years, taking over the reins after Pekka Rene left, there is an overarching idea that says, yeah, his time on the Predators may not be all too long, considering his contract status and considering the state of the team, not to mention, as we had said, considering Yaroslav Askarov. So because Predators fans have been slowly hearing it over the course of the past few months that Soros actually could get traded, it seemed to be more of a possibility amongst that fan base. And I honestly commend Preds fans that I'm seeing all over the place for talking about it like this, because it's never an easy discussion to trade away a fan favorite piece. But if you do get yourselves two first round picks, a first round prospect, and another asset on top of that, I mean, what are you going to say no to that? Take a look at the teams that probably have the capital to go out there and make a trade for Soros anyway. A team that's going out there for Soros probably isn't using him for a rental. I mean, he's signed on till the end of 24-25, so you kind of have to hope that whichever team going out there and using him is going to be able to give him the bag. And if you're getting him on a team that has salary cap space to burn, that team itself probably isn't like top tier already. They're probably making a trade for Soros because they want to put themselves over the edge. That leaves reasonable room for doubt as to whether or not this team could be a number one top of the league amazing squad at the moment. So, if you go out there and assume, hey, let's say it's a 15 to 17th overall NHL team making a trade for UC Soros. There's reasonable doubt to say that Soros, for all the good that he can bring, is not going to be the quote-unquote savior of a franchise. He very well could be, but is it guaranteed? I'd probably say no. So if Soros heads over to a team that is middling in the middle of the pack, they're not really too amazing, they're not guaranteed to make it a wild card or whatever, then would you want two first-round picks from that kind of team? Especially if they have the capability of keeping Soros and signing him to the bag that he probably deserves. I mean, I'd say it's pretty valuable to get two first-round picks from any team, but especially from a team that would be willing to pay the price to get Soros. Because all the really good teams probably aren't making this trade. So, there's something to think about, especially if you consider the Predators and their own prospect pool, and you want to add to that. Not to mention the other prospect and the other athletes that would also be included in this type of a deal. So... Honestly, if this trade goes down the way Peñota is saying it is, two first-round picks, a first-round prospect, and a third asset, or excuse me, a fourth asset, then honestly, I think about it. So, for Barry Trotz to go out there and say, yeah, we like Soros, we want to keep him around, only for the verdict to be, yeah, but if there's a really big offer coming, then we won't not listen to it. That makes a lot of sense to me. What does it say to you? There also have been other conversations I've seen amongst other teams' fan bases saying, hey, Saros's price is around this ballpark. I mean, two firsts, uh, first-round prospect, and another piece. That's not that bad, man. That's like right around what we're comfortable giving up for a superstar goalie, right? Right? And it opens up a bigger conversation as to which teams could actually make this move. If you're a fan of any of the other NHL teams, then hey, let me know your thoughts on the comment section. Do you think your team should trade for Soros if you're a Predators fan? I know there are a few of you, because we have made a few Predators videos in the past and have gotten some very nice comments. What are your thoughts on the idea of a Soros trade actually going through? Do you want to trade this guy away? Do you actually see value in making this kind of a deal? Or would you rather bite the bullet and say, screw it, man, we're losing without him anyway, so let's just keep him because he's good and we can re-sign him and have him for the long haul because he has been awesome like that? Or do you want to capitalize on that value? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I gotta get back to watching the All-Star game. Team McDavid just beat out Team McKinnon in the shootout. And bye.